In this video, we're going to answer the age-old question, which is faster, CPU or GPU? What's your minimum specification? So I know what you're thinking, Ian, that's a stupid question. Of course a GPU is much, 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 much faster than a CPU. The beauty of this question is that it's more nuanced than it seems. Uh, CPUs are general purpose compute platforms, whereas GPUs just seem to do one thing or one group of things really well. What Intel does when it says, talks about this is that it describes CPU as you know, the engine that does everything, and then as you need to go into a narrow, narrower subset of uh, compute, you use accelerated hardware, you use dedicated silicon for that process. So you, you have GPUs, which do graphics and vector engines quite well. Then we have these sort of matrix engines that can go even beyond GPUs. We have uh, FPGAs that can do any sort of compute that you can think exists. And then you have spatial compute, which is kind of like AI engines dealing with uh, graphs and managing data back and forth. Now, CPUs are designed to do all of that. Uh, they do the really, really complex repetitive math stuff, but slower. And the idea is that as we get into smaller and smaller process nodes, even CPUs get accelerators built into them to help accelerate some of those features like uh, AES instructions, for example, um, or shut, you know, these are just cri cryptography algorithms. Um, but, you know, we've got now graphics in CPUs. There might be a bit down the line where we have FPGAs in CPUs. Intel even did an FPGA in a CPU, the Xeon Gold 6138P, I'll throw up a picture. Um, but that has an ARIA 10 FPGA built on package that, uh, the programmer can use as like a PCIe add-in device. So then we come to the question, well, how do we compare whether a CPU is fast compared to a GPU? It is very much an apples and oranges type uh, type equation because anything that you can do on a GPU, you could do on a CPU, but slower. So is there a test we can devise that is applicable to both situations? Now, if you saw a video of mine uh, a little while ago, you'll notice that I had this system that's right behind me, the dual core Jaguar system, that's going to come into play here because there is a benchmark we can do and it's rendering a game. But what we're going to do is we're going to render a game on this, the Threadripper 3995WX uh, workstation CPU. This is the 3990X, the 3995WX is in that system there. We're going to render Crisis in CPU rendering only mode against a big GPU, this, the RTX 2080 Ti. But what we're going to do is we're going to give the CPU the best situation it can be in, uh, max amount of memory channels, as much compute as we can throw at it. And with the GPU, we're going to pair it with this dual core Jaguar system. We're going to try and cripple this as much as we can and see at what point CPU rendering that's uh, CPU rendering beats GPU rendering, and at what resolution, what quality settings, the GPU still wins. If you want to see what benchmarking this really looks like at 300 by 200, I'll add in some uh, clips at the end of the video just after the cat tax. Always a cat tax. So I've already done a video on uh, benchmarking crisis in CPU only mode. I'll throw up a card here uh, so you guys can see that if you like. Um, it's a very simple tool. We basically disable the graphics card uh, in device manager in Windows 10. Crisis, the GOG edition, uh, has a, a dedicated launcher for the main game. Uh, but the benchmark is actually a little bit more difficult to run. Uh, there are two main limitations to that benchmark. Uh, you can only run a maximum of 32 threads or a maximum of 23 cores. I've built a script to deal with all of that. So on the CPU side, we're limited to uh, 32 threads. Uh, I think I actually run it in 23 core mode because uh, that is actually slightly faster because then you've got 23 full cores running at it. Against uh, the GPU, which is just running standard, um, standard GPU NVIDIA drivers, uh, but we've got Windows 10 on that dual core Jaguar and it's just really slow. I mean, booting into the system takes 15 minutes. Um, actually loading Crisis benchmark takes longer than to actually run the benchmark. That's how slow it is. 
what I did for this test is I wrote a script to run Crisis in both modes, on both the CPU and the GPU, in a variety of resolutions or at the lowest graf graphical settings. Um, so this is going all the way from 300 by 200, uh, which is you know really old, super small, all the way up to um, 5120 by 2880, and about 30 different versions in between of you know 4, uh, 4 by 3, 16 by 9, 16 by 10, 3 by 2. Uh, there's even a couple of 32 by 9 uh, resolution settings in there. And what I wanted to find out is the crossover point between the CPU and the GPU in that context. Now, on the lowest graphical quality settings, uh, the CPU, the 3995WX, uh, scored at 25 FPS, whereas the RTX 2080 Ti, in that same context at 300 by 200, only scored 11. You know, there's a 2x win for the CPU. Surely CPU is best! Then we add in the pixels. Um, as you add in more and more pixels, obviously, when it comes to the CPU, you're just adding in compute, and it's a very linear... Uh, increase in compute. On the GPU side, the GPU is actually mostly idle. Um, what the bottleneck here in this system is actually the CPU pushing through the kernel commands uh, into the GPU. So actually, regardless of whatever resolution we're testing at, we get an average of 11.1 .1 FPS regard, you know, on the 2080 Ti, just because the CPU is that slow. This is this is the 2080 Ti in quite possibly the very worst situation it could ever be in. So we're looking for a point where the 3995WX crosses over that 11.1 .1 FPS barrier. And here's a graph of all my results. Um, this is where I say it is what it is, uh, but there's very distinctly a straight line with the GPU. And the CPU, um, you can tell, just curves down. Now, this is a logarithmic plot on the x-axis, so you can see it curved down as it crosses a line and kind of flattens out. And if I'd have kept going, I actually think the system crashed at 5120 by 2880. Um, theoretically, I could go you know, 10k and see what that does, but who games on a CPU at 10k? Who games using the CPU as the renderer on 10k? No one, exactly. So why am I ever going to bother going to do that test? Regardless, the crossover point between the two is about 30% higher than 1080p. Uh, so we're actually looking at 1920 by 1440 as a resolution is where the FPS rates are about the same. Both score about 11 FPS. And that's the result of this test, of this absolutely stupid test. Which is faster, CPU or GPU? The answer is CPU is faster at 1080p or lower if you're really stupid and put the GPU in a very limited situation. What's your minimum specification? Here's a hint. Don't go for the dual core one gigahertz Jaguar. It really is terrible. <coughs> Thank you all for watching this stupid video. Please give a like if you liked it. Please give a thumbs down and a comment below if you disliked it. And please tell me how to improve the videos that I'm creating. Uh, if you're so inclined, there is a Patreon. Uh, many thanks to the Patreons who invest. I, now that I'm doing videos on a more regular basis, those Patreons are getting those videos one to two days early. Hopefully we'll build up a, uh, a stock of videos such that that can be even a week early. So if, don't miss out if you want to get into on the Patreon side. And the question remains, what's your minimum specification? Maybe if I think I get an RTX 3090, maybe that'll change things. <laughs> or Milan. <laughs>